Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Kung, Asha, Christopher, and Abinas for joining class. Uh, we'll begin. The others will join in the meantime. Can I ask uh, Abinas, can you please lead us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am, sure. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and beautiful time, Father God. This time we come to your throne, Father God, with a one accord and one mind, Father God. And as we are going through this book of Romans, Father God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you reveal your heavenly things, Father God, so that we will learn and equip ourselves, Father God. And we will know that the hidden truths that you have, Father God. We commit man to your mighty hand and all the students to your mighty hand, Jesus. And we have this pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, thank you, Abinas. Okay, we'll uh, continue with our study in Romans. I hope you all are uh, learning from the book of Romans, encouraged, um, uplifted, you know, spiritually growing in your understanding about God's ways um, and the doctrines that we are learning also through these chapters. We've come to chapter uh, 10. Okay, anyone has any questions about chapter 9? Any questions in chapter 9? Anyone? So basically in chapter 9 we saw that, uh, you know, Paul is basically trying to answer the question, what is God doing with the Jewish people? Because you know, he's chosen them, he had given them the covenants, the, 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 the sign of the covenant, which is circumcision, giving them the laws, the prophets, there's the, the forefathers uh, there. Um, through them came the priests, you know, and they were the chosen generation, the chosen people group through whom God is going to fulfill his plans and purposes. And here we see that God has chosen the church, uh, which is comprising of Jews and Gentiles. So what is going God doing with the Jewish people, those who have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, has not accepted Jesus as the Messiah? And uh, so, what are the promises? You know, where are the promises? Where are the promises gone uh, that he that God made uh, to the Jewish race? Um, so we see that you know the promises of God haven't yet failed. You know, and will not fail. God is a promise keeping God. He will keep His promises. Um, and so, you know, Paul first states in, in Romans chapter 9, uh, who are the children of promise? The children of promise are not the children who are, uh, you know, born to Jewish, uh, the Jewish race or to Jewish parents, uh, but uh, the children of promise are those who believe God. They're made righteous by faith. They receive righteousness by faith. Uh, when they believe in God, they are called the children of promise. Second, he says, you know, the purposes of God will be fulfilled uh, because God is sovereign. Uh, he will go about doing what he has planned, he has purposed even before the foundations of the world, in spite of man's uh, choices. And so he gives an examples of uh, Abraham, Jacob, Esau, Moses, and Pharaoh. Uh, in spite of uh, their own, uh, the decisions that they made, the choices that they make, God brings, fulfills his uh, plan and his, uh, his purposes. Uh, because he's sovereign, he does what he wills, but even though they don't choose according to his plan and purpose, yet we see that God goes, uh, uh, will bring about his plan and purpose, uh, uh, will um, see his uh, plan and purpose that he has envisioned, that he, has, that he desires uh, to be fulfilled uh, through, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, through what he is uh, uh, unveiling in history. Okay, so that is uh, uh, God's sovereign uh, will or his plan and purposes that stands, that he brings about uh, irrespective of man's uh, choices. And we also see that uh, towards the end of Romans chapter 9, that the Jews want to, you know, establish their own righteousness. They want to be made right in God's, in God's sight. They want to have a right standing. Uh, and they do it, you know, in their own understanding, in their own ways, based on the law, uh, instead of receiving the 
their righteousness by faith. Uh, they want to pursue it by the works of the law. And, you know, uh, and God is going to override that, you know, uh, uh, God is going to, uh, you know, is going to give them up to their own choices that, yeah, you can choose, you know, keeping the law, you think you're going to be made righteous by keeping the law. You know, he just gives them up to their own uh, plans and purposes. He's not going to override their choices. But those he uh, those who choose, uh, you know, uh, to be made righteous by faith, they become the children of promise. They inherit uh, the promises. Uh, they uh, become part of the blessings that was given to Abraham, and uh, God will uh, bring about the blessings, the plans, the purposes He has uh, for their lives. It's because of the choice that they have made. But those who still want to, uh, you know, the Jews who still want to do, uh, make themselves righteous or think righteousness is uh, by keeping the law, uh, God is not going to override them. He's going to give them up to their own uh, choices. Now, in um, that is uh, briefly what we saw in uh, chapter 9. Uh, in chapter 10, you know, um, so we see that um, you know Paul is again talking about um, how we can be made righteous, um, and he uh, you know he talks about the Jews and the Gentiles, uh, what is God's plan uh, for them, uh, what is God's will, what He has uh, foreordained, and how He is going about of bringing about His plan and His will into fruition okay so we look at um, uh, romans chapter 10 can somebody please read verses 1 to 5 please romans chapter 10 verses 1 to 5 shall i read it ma'am yes thank you rupa romans chapter 10 1 to 5 brothers my heart's desire and prayer to god for them is that they may be saved but I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. But being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. But Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses who writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandment shall live by them. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, is my voice audible? Is it clear uh, or uh, is it echoing? It's clear, Pastor. Sorry, dear. It's clear, Pastor. It's clear. Okay. Thank you, Asha. Okay. So we see in uh, uh, chapter 10, verse 1, Paul is basically repeating. Uh, what he said in the beginning of chapter 9, uh, what he's revealing that is in his heart or what is the desire of his heart. Uh, his desire uh, in his heart uh, um, is that, you know, for his own people to be saved, the Jewish people to be saved, to come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Christ uh, Jesus, to receive salvation. So he's uh, beginning chapter 10 uh, as he began chapter 9, where he he's, um, he's saying, you know, what is his, his desire, his burden, his overriding desires, his deep desire, his will, uh, his burden in his heart that is for his own people, the Jewish people, to be um, saved. We know that um, Paul uh, was a staunch Jew, uh, but you know, through this powerful encounter that he had on the road to Damascus with uh, uh, Jesus, you know, he comes to faith in Christ and uh, he knows that this encounter has brought significant transformation uh, in his life and he's desiring, you know, the same thing for the rest of his Jewish uh, people. Verse 2, he says, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to uh, knowledge. Okay, so the Jewish people are very zealous for God, um, but they do not have the right knowledge. Uh, they are so blinded to the truth, uh, and their eyes have not been opened uh, to the truth. So even though they are zealous uh, for God, just like 
Paul was so zealous for God and that's why he was going around persecuting the Christians because he was so zealous for the Jewish faith. Uh, so he's saying, yes, these Jewish people just like me are very zealous for God, uh, but sadly they don't have the right knowledge. They're so blinded to the truth. Uh, their eyes have not been opened to the uh, truth. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of uh, God. Okay, so he's saying here that, you know, they are ignorant about how to receive uh, God's righteousness. So the Jewish people is saying are so ignorant about how uh, to receive God's righteousness. They're going about trying to establish their own righteousness uh, by keeping the law. Uh, and, uh, you know, they haven't received a revelation of how they can receive uh, righteousness uh, through Jesus Christ. Or even if they receive, some of them have received that revelation, you know, they don't want to believe it. Um, and then later on in this chapter, he goes and goes on to say how, you know, because they rejected the gospel, how the reject the gospel was, you know, God um, in a sovereign will, you know, chose the gospel to be shared with the Gentiles. And hence, they also become, uh, when they receive, uh, by their own choices, when they receive and they're made righteous by faith, um, they become children of a promise. So, you know, he says that, you know, um, they have, uh, uh, you know, um, received maybe the revelation, but they're seeking to do, uh, establishing, they're seeking to establish their own righteousness in their own uh, strength, in their own wisdom by keeping their law. And they have not uh, submitted to the righteousness of God. So even though they have received uh, the revelation, so to say, some of them, uh, they have chose not to submit uh, to the righteousness of uh, God. That is, they, they have not believed uh, that they can receive righteousness through Jesus Christ. In verse 4, he says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So Paul is very beautifully stating here that, yes, God gave the law, uh, but we could not keep the law. Uh, the law just kind of uh, showed us what is, you know, when we were sinning, it made us aware of sin. It highlighted sin. Uh, it showed us when we were missing the mark, but the law could not uh, enable us uh, to keep the law. It could not make us uh, righteous. And so he says, Christ is the end of the law. So all of the law was given uh, for one reason. What, what was the law given for? The law given was given for a reason that is to bring us to Christ. The law was given to point to Christ. The law was given so that uh, we can come to a place we can where we can understand that righteousness is through faith in uh, Jesus Christ. So all of the law is just speaking of one person that is... Uh, <clears throat> sorry... So the, the all of the law is speaking of one person, and that is uh, Christ. So all of the law was given for one reason, uh, which is to bring us to Christ. The law pointed us to Christ. Why? How does the law point us to Christ? The law uh, showed us when we sin, when we missed the mark. It highlighted sin in our life, but it could not uh, empower us to keep the law. So, you know, uh, it, it showed us that there is somebody else, you know, God himself, who can enable us to keep uh, the law. It, it showed us uh, Christ, and Christ uh, was the one who came. And, uh, you know, uh, through his righteousness, the, his righteousness was imputed upon us, was put into our account. And, uh, you know, when we believe by faith, we, have, we are made into right standing uh, with God. God. Okay, so all of the law speaks of one person, Christ. All of the law points to one person, that is Christ. And all of the law was given for one reason, that is to bring us to Christ. Verse 5, he says, For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law, as the man who does those things shall live by them. So um, basically, you know, uh, uh, Paul is pointing out to Moses when uh, Moses said, if you want righteousness by the law, you have to live by the law. And this is very difficult because uh, you would, eventually you know that you will end up not keeping the law but or living by the law but breaking the law. Because if you break one law, 
you know, you've, bre you've broken all of the laws. So, you know, you just can't keep any of the laws. So it's very difficult because you will end up breaking it at least one of the many laws you will, you will end up uh, breaking. So if you break one of the law, it's as though you've broken the whole law. Okay, you have broken all of the law. So the option of getting righteousness by the law is not available. There is no possibility of being made righteous by keeping the law. So the only way of receiving righteousness is through Christ. Uh, but the Jews, Paul says, are not willing to see that. They're not only willing to see that, they're not only willing to receive that, and hence they're trying to... Um, you know, uh, work out their own righteousness by keeping the law and uh, it's not working for them. So in verse 6 uh, onwards, you know, Paul is talking about righteousness by faith and he says, he talks about uh, people who receive righteousness by faith, how do they live? So he's going to talk about this in verses 6 onwards where he's talking about righteousness by faith and he's going to tell us that um, you know, people who uh, receive righteousness by faith, how do they live? So can some of, one of you please read verse, uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 6 to uh, 13, please. But the righteous faith and faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? This is to bring Christ down, or who is descending to others. This is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, the mouth and the heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because, of, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and there is in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Oh, did you read verse um, uh, 10 and 11 as well, please? Uh, yes, 10 Master. to 13 as well. Yes, Master. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with, one, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Asha. Uh, so here in verse um, 6, uh, Paul is saying, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven or who will descend into the abyss. So here, you know, um, Paul is saying, those who receive righteousness by faith, they speak in this way how do they speak and he's quoting uh, from deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 12 to 14 uh, so we read deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 12 to 14 or we can uh, read even verse 11 so deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11 to 14 can one of you please read that deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 to 14 Somebody else read, please. Deuteronomy uh, 30, 11 through 14, Pastor. Yes. Okay, I'll read. This command I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you and it's not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so that we can hear it, hear it and obey. It is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it bring it to us so we can hear it and obey. No, the message is very close at hand. It is, a, it is on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. Thank you, Kung. Amen. So here, you know, Paul is, um, uh, uh, you know, quoting um, uh, from the Old Testament scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11 to 14, we said in the introduction that, you know, uh, we see in uh, the episode of Romans, uh, Paul quotes a lot of Old Testament uh, scripture. 
So here is one of the scriptures that he has quoted. And here, uh, this scripture here in Deuteronomy chapter 30 is what Moses is speaking to uh, the people of uh, Israel. He's talking to them. He's telling them, uh, telling the people about the commandment, the law, uh, that, you know, the commandment and the law is not mysterious. Okay, it's not mysterious that is, you know, that you have to go and look for it in heaven or you should go down to the bottom of the sea, uh, that you have to look for it, that you have to understand it, uh, that you have to discern it. No, it's quite simple. It's easy. It says it's close to you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth for you to do it. So what he's saying is, um, you know, the law and commandments of God is not mysterious. Uh, that you cannot understand. It's something that you can understand. It's 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 very near you. It's already in your heart. It's in your mouth. That means it's so much part of you. It's 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 so much part of you that you know uh, you can just live by it. It it's not something that you have to uh, adhere to in in a in a way of keeping rules. But it's something that is a way of life. It's something that's a lifestyle that you just live by it. It's just something that's so automatic uh, that is. Uh, it's innate in you. It's it's part of inbuilt in you. It's part of you because it is very near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth for you to do it. Uh, it's not something that you can't understand. So what he's basically encouraging the people is, you know, don't uh, uh, don't make excuses that you can't keep the law. You don't know the law. You can't understand the law. No, but the law is you know close to you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. Uh, and, you know, uh, Paul is uh, quoting that scripture here um, in verse 6, and he says, do not say in your heart, you know, uh, uh, who will um, uh, you know ascend into heaven, or who will descend into the uh, abscess? And he says in in verse eight, he says, but what does it say? The word is near you; it's in your mouth and in your heart. And this is the word of faith which we preach. Now, in Paul is quoting from. Uh, the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, 14. But in Deuteronomy, Moses is talking about the commandments and the law, or the commandments and or the law. And here, uh, Paul, instead of saying the commandments, he's saying the word. Okay, that is the difference here. Okay, Paul uh, is saying, using uh, the, the, the word word, but uh, when Moses speaks, he talks about the commandment or the uh, law and so Paul is instead of saying commandment he's saying the word he's saying the word of faith which is preached to you which we preach uh, to people so he says the word is near you so we see that Paul is replacing commandment with the word is replacing commandment with Christ because he has just stated that the end of the law is Christ so he's replacing the commandment or the law with Christ we we read that in um, in um in verse um uh in verse 4, for the for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone who um believes. So in verse 4, he is replacing the commandment with Christ, and uh, here he's replacing the commandment or the law uh, with uh, uh, with the word word. So what is Paul trying to basically say here? He says, uh, the way God wants us to live actually hasn't changed it's the same uh, in the old testament it's the same even now you know in the old testament the the law the commandments is uh, is near them it's in their heart and in the in their mouth in order for them uh, to know what the law is it's not mysterious for them they can understand it they know what they need to uh, do but you know uh, much hasn't changed what has only changed is in the old testament it is the law but in the new testament it is the message of christ it's the word of faith that we preach it's the word of christ it's the word of faith it's the teaching of jesus it is who jesus is what he has done and what he has made available to us and paul is saying uh, this is the word that we preach and this is the word that is um uh, you know, is in your heart, it's in your uh, in your mouth. In order for you to uh, understand it, for you to to know it, for you 
for you to uh, do what is required of you. So Christ is not far away. You know, uh, it's not like somewhere uh, in heaven that we have to search for him, or it's not, he's not deep down, uh, you know, that we have to go looking for him. Just like, you know, the, the law is not so mysterious that we have to go to heaven and try to understand the meaning, or we need to go down to the depths of the sea to find the meaning. Uh, no, the law is in, it's near you, it's in your heart and your mouth. The same way Christ is not far away, or he's not deep down that, uh, that you can't understand him, but he's right near you okay he's um he's just just there next to you he's right there with within you and it's it's within your reach it's the word of faith and the message of christ uh who christ is and what he has done so you know that message that word you know paul is saying keep it in your heart and keep it in your um, mouth and then in verses 9 and 10 he explains to us something which is not mentioned which Moses has not mentioned in Deuteronomy in verses 9 and 10 uh, Paul is basically explaining to us the dynamics of how it works yes the word uh, in the New Testament it's the word Paul says is is near you it's in your heart in your mouth of course in the Old Testament Moses says it's the law the commandments is near you it's in the heart in your mouth but you know uh, Paul is going on to explain the dynamics of how this works he's going to talk about the inner details of of keeping the word in our heart and in our mouth yes the word you know all that Christ has done or the message of Christ what he's accomplished um, you know what what he has said what he has done for us uh, it's not mysterious we 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 all know about it because that is what is preached that is what has been told to us we are aware of it so the revelation has been revealed to us we know we have seen the truth uh, but you know uh, he's talking about the dynamics of how it works in our lives he's talking about the inner details of keeping the word in our heart and mouth so how does it really work even though the, the word is near us it's near our heart and our mouth how does it work in verse 9 uh, uh you know paul says in uh, in verse 9 he says if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved okay so here in verse 9 he says if we confess with our mouth what do we confess we don't confess with our mouth the commandments or the law but we confess with our mouth uh, the lord jesus and when we believe in our heart that god has raised him from the dead then we will be saved which means we will experience salvation we will experience uh, sozo. Sozo, we know, is a comprehensive word, which, uh, you know, it uh, it's not just uh, you're saving us from our sins. It's not just talking about forgiveness of sins, but it's talking about uh, healing. It's talking about deliverance. It's talking about divine uh, protection. It's talking about redemption. Uh, it's talking about um, you know wholeness uh, and the fullness of the life the zoe life that god has come to uh, give us so he says how does this whole thing work the word is near our heart and it's in our mouth but how does it work it only works when we confess it with our mouth and we believe it in our heart so we believe in our heart that jesus christ is god we believe in our heart what he has said what he has done for us on the cross what he's accomplished for us on the cross we believe it in our heart and then we confess it with our mouth and what happens when we confess uh with our in our mouth what jesus has done for us on the cross uh you know uh, we will be saved which means we will experience uh, salvation so when we believe who this christ is and what he has done for us we will experience salvation so he's just basically talking deeper about the dynamics of how this whole thing works uh, but uh, moses does not talk about this in deuteronomy in romans chapter 10 verse 10 he says for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so um in verse 10 he says for with the heart one believes uh, unto righteousness so in our heart we believe with righteousness so why does god want to keep his word in our heart because it's in our heart that we believe because his word says here for with the heart one believes unto 
righteousness. So why is God saying, you know, the word is near you, you know, keep it in your heart and in your mouth. Why should we keep his word in our heart? It's because in our heart is where we believe, uh, you know, uh, God. It's in our heart where we are, we believe and we are made righteous. We come into a right standing uh, with God. You, it's in your heart that you believe that word. It's in your heart that you believe who Christ is. It's in your heart that you believe uh, what he has done uh, for you. It's in your heart you believe this message and you believe in your heart and when you believe in your heart you know you're put into a right standing uh, with God. You're in a position where you are rightly positioned in Christ and you have a right standing uh, with uh, Christ. So with the heart man believes uh, which results in, uh, in, in righteousness, which results in a right standing with God, which results in, uh, in us being rightly positioned uh, in Christ. And it's in our mouth that confession is made. And so when we believe in our heart, you know, we made righteous, but when we confess with our mouth, you know, uh, that Jesus is Lord and what he has done on the cross for us, uh, you know, the whole process is complete. And what does it result in? It results in uh, salvation. So Paul is basically saying that those who receive righteousness by faith, they are to speak like this. How are they to speak? They are to believe in their hearts and they have to confess with their mouths. So they believe in their hearts and they confess with their mouth who Jesus is, what he has done, you know, what is the message of Christ, uh, the word of faith, which Paul says, you know, which we have been speaking and preaching. So he says, we do not uh, speak as though Christ is far away in heaven. Where he say, okay, where is Christ? You know, or as if to say he's dead and deep down in the earth. They were looking for him. Uh, but he says the message is right here. It's in our heart and in our uh, mouth. Now, this confession is, uh, you know, that we make is not a one-time confession. Yes, we make the confession once and, uh, you know, we make that choice. We choose um, uh, righteousness by faith and we come into a right standing with God and uh, we confess with our mouths and we receive salvation. But this confession um, that even Moses is talking about in Deuteronomy and uh, what Paul is saying here in Romans chapter 10 is not a one-time thing. Okay, uh, we, we continuously keep on reminding ourselves who God is, what he has done for us. Uh, like every time we partake in a communion, we're reminding ourselves what he has done on the cross. You know, every time we are sick, we are, uh, you know, we are uh, pressing in for healing or we're pressing in for deliverance or we're pressing in for a breakthrough. We're actually going back to what Christ has done on the cross, what he has spoken, what he has done for us, the promises that he has spoken over our lives, the blessings, our spiritual blessings. We're declaring, we're decreeing, it, we're speaking it over our um, life. So it's not something that we, you know, believe in our heart one time and confess them out one time and uh, it's done. But, uh, you know, uh, what Paul is saying here is, is um, uh, and also what, uh, uh, you know, Moses says in Deuteronomy, it's not a one-time confession, but it's a way of life, Okay. Uh, the law, uh, Moses says, is in your heart and in your mouth. That means every time we're speaking, we're speaking the law. Every time we're, uh, uh, you know, we're living, we're living by the law book because in our heart, what uh, uh, our heart rules our lives, right? Our desires and our passions. And uh, so also when when Paul is saying the word, uh, what Christ has done, what he's accomplished on the cross, what uh, who he is and what he has done, it's in our heart and it's in our mouth that constantly speaking, confessing that it becomes a, a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And we, because we're continually believing that truth in our heart, we're continually confessing it in our mouth, what Jesus has accomplished for us in our, in our lives uh, through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. So it's something that we continually confess, make known, and constantly keep speaking about it and uh, decree. So, what does this mean for us? It means that those who have received righteousness by faith, you know, they're always speaking the word of faith. They're always speaking the message of who Jesus is and what he has uh, done. And doing this, you know, believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth uh, puts uh, the person uh, who's made the choice to 
confess and believe uh, in his heart and confess his mouth, you know, puts them in a place of right standing with God and experiencing who um, Christ is. Now, the Greek word for this word confession means to say the same thing. Okay, so the Greek word for the word confession means to say the same things, which means you know, we are speaking in agreement with who Christ is. That means we're saying the same thing just as Christ is saying, or we are speaking in agreement with who uh, Christ is. So, you know, when we're saying things, we're confessing things, which means we're, made, we're speaking in agreement with who Christ is. Uh, uh, we're saying this is who Jesus is, this is what he has done for me, this is what he has accomplished for me, this is what he has done for me or purchased for me on the cross through his death, uh, to his burial, his resurrection. So when I'm saying the same thing, I'm not saying something that is contrary to who uh, God is or to who Jesus is and what he has done. Um, you know, when when we do that, you know, uh, we receive uh, uh, the blessings. Just like in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, Jesus said, If you confess me before men, uh, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. So what does it mean? It means that if we say who Christ is, if we're constantly declaring who Christ is, what he has done, declaring him over our situations, over our life, over our, our challenges, uh, over our salvation, we are constantly speaking, declaring and believing it, um, and also speaking it to people, declaring it before people, you know, uh, uh, you're basically declaring who Christ is and what he has done, then in the same way, uh, Jesus is saying here, that, you know, then I will also declare to you that I am their healer, I am their deliverer. Because we are speaking in agreement, because when we're saying, you know, Jesus, I believe that you have taken all of my uh, sicknesses on the cross, I believe that you are my healer, we are actually believing in our heart, we're confessing with our mouth, and then what happens when we confess? You know, we when we confess, you know, Jesus says, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. So Jesus is standing there interceding on behalf of us, and he's saying, yes, I am your healer. So here, receive your healing, because we're confessing, we're saying things in agreement uh, with who um, Christ is. So you know the power of our confession is so powerful, what we believe in our heart, what we are confessing. So if we say who Christ is to us, then Jesus will declare, you know, this to us, that yes, I am your healer, I am your deliverer, I am your uh, uh, provider, I am your way maker, I am your miracle worker, you know, I am the one who will give you the favor. I am the one whose, whose grace is sufficient for you. Why? Because we are confessing. And when we are confessing, we're saying that in agreement with what Christ would also say along with us. Isn't that powerful? So it's important that, you know, we constantly are confessing uh, from our mouths and constantly believing in our heart who Jesus is, what he has done, um, and, uh, you know, uh, what he has accomplished for us on the Cross. So Paul is saying that this word of faith or the message of Christ, uh, what he did through his death, burial and resurrection, you know, he's saying uh, in verses uh, 11 to 13, uh, he's saying has to reach all people. Okay, has to reach all people. It's not that you know only we know about it and we enjoy uh, this blessing of uh, receiving salvation. So so uh, of of saying things in agreement where Jesus is also in agreement with us, at, uh, attesting with what we are saying and seeing that become a reality of fulfillment in the natural. Um, but here Paul is saying that this word of faith, this message of Christ that is near us, is in our heart, in our mouth, you know, what Christ has done uh, on the cross and also what he has accomplished for us through his burial, uh, his uh, resurrection, his ascension, it has to reach all people, okay, because everyone has access uh, to this truth. Everyone needs to know this truth. And he's saying that, you know, just like I have a burden for my own people that they know this truth, um, they believe this truth, even as they have access to this truth. He says, you know, the same way I want, you know, people in all races throughout the world to have access to this. 
uh, and anyone can have access to this and anyone who believes in this who makes a choice to believe in jesus uh, who calls on the name of the lord jesus will be saved because all who call upon him god will respond to all of them and that is what we see in verses uh, 11 to 13 where um, you know basically um, uh, paul is quoting from the old testament scripture and he says whoever believes you know there's no distinction between jew or greek and verse 13 he says whoever calls so uh, you know everyone who believes whether it's jews gentiles greeks Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he says, you know, once you've received the, this truth, you know, don't just keep making confessions for yourself uh, and believe in your heart, but also, you know, make known your confession to others, uh, speak it out to others so that everyone can have access and all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Then in verses 14 to 21, um, is a motivation uh, that Paul is basically motivating us that the message of Christ has to go out to every one. Okay, so we look at 14 to 21. Before we look at four, verses 14 to 21, any of you have any questions? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, this perfect silence. Uh, we'll we'll read uh, verses fourteen to twenty-one. So, can somebody please read uh, clearly and slowly verses fourteen to twenty-one, please? How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have. Their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Then I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not see me. I have shown myself to those who, have, who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Thank you, Asha. Thank you very much. Okay, so in verse 14, uh, you know, Paul is basically motivating us to take out the gospel, to declare, uh, to confess who Jesus Christ is before men. So he says, you know, how would people uh, call? Because, you know, if you look at verse 13, he says, all those who call or whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he goes on to say, how will they call on the name of the Lord? Uh, you know, if they have not believed and how can they believe if they have not heard and how can they hear if there is no one going and uh, preaching and how can somebody go and preach unless uh, they are uh, sent. So he says that, you know, no one can believe unless they hear and how can they hear with, if there's no preacher, no, someone has to go and preach and how can someone preach unless uh, he's sent uh, so someone has to send them uh, out. So here, the importance of missions, the mandate for missions is very given, very clearly given here. So verses 14 and 15 are classic texts to encourage uh, people for um, missions. And in verse uh, 15, you know, um, uh, you know, Paul is quoting Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7, where he says, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, peace who bring glad tidings of good things. And uh, in verse 16, you know, um, 
uh, he's he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 53 verse uh, 1 where he's saying that you know where Isaiah says Lord who has believed okay uh, so yes you know uh, Paul is saying uh, you know people cannot believe if they have not heard and they cannot hear if there's no preacher who goes and there's preacher cannot go if nobody sends them uh, but even if a preacher goes and people hear the gospel they hear the truth but yet you know there are people who have not obeyed the gospel so he's basically even you know indirectly just basically talking about uh, there are few remnant Jews who have accepted Christ but there are many Jews who have still not believed even though they have heard the uh, truth and he's quoting from Isaiah he says you know Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1 he says um, Lord uh, you know uh, who has believed our report so not everyone who believe will believe when we go and preach uh, or when the preacher send not everyone would uh, hear and not everyone would uh, believe but that does not uh, stop us from going and sharing the gospel or the truth of the gospel we need to go and preach the uh, gospel so even though people don't believe it's our responsibility to preach the gospel uh, because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God okay so how does faith come faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God verse 17 so that's so beautifully uh, Paul has um, just put it here you know he says um, uh, you know just go and preach yeah there are many people who uh, God foreknows for, for already who are not going to accept him who are going to reject him but that should not stop us from going and preaching the gospel because he says faith comes from by hearing and hearing by the word of uh, God. Okay, and then uh, he goes back to his original style of how he's been writing uh, Romans. Uh, again, he goes back to his rhetorical questions in verses 18 and 19, uh, where he basically asks questions which would pop up in the mind of his readers or in the mind of uh, his Jewish audience uh, or in the church. And uh, he basically asks the questions and he answers it himself so in verses 18 and 19 he asked these questions uh, but I say have they not heard and verse 19 but I say did Israel not know so uh, he's saying did uh, so did Israel not hear the gospel do they not hear the truth do they not uh, hear the revelations uh, they're not aware of it he's saying no they have heard it you know, uh, they have known it. Yes, they have known it. They have heard it, uh, but they have still chosen to reject it. But there are some who have made a choice to uh, receive the righteousness by faith, and they are part of God's uh, uh, children, part of God's family. They are the promise uh, seed, and uh, theirs is the uh, blessing. Okay, and then in verse um, eighteen. Uh, you know, Paul, uh, he asks the first rhetorical questions and says, yes, they have heard. And then he quotes uh, from, uh, you know, uh, Psalms chapter 19, verse 4, where he says, the sound has gone out to all the earth and the words to the ends of the world. And in verse 19, he again asks the second rhetorical question. He says, uh, did Israel not know? But he says, no, they have known. And then he quotes uh, what Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse um, uh, 21, where he says, I was found by those who do not seek me. I was made manifest to those who do not ask me. So he's basically talking here about uh, the Jews. Okay. Um, and I will provoke you to jealousy uh, here again he's talking about the Jews by those who are not a nation uh, he's talking about uh, the Gentiles and he says I will move you to anger by a foolish nation I will move you to anger he's talking about the Jews and uh, you know the uh, because uh, the Jews refuse to receive the gospel uh, God in his sovereign plan you know um, uh, you know made known the gospel to the Gentiles and uh, he says you know uh, why did God do that is so that he could you know um, uh, so that the eyes of these Jewish people uh, were uh, could be opened okay provoke means uh, to awaken 
okay, to awaken them from their sleep, from their uh, slumber. So uh, God is basically saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, through Paul, where he's quoting uh, from, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21, where Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. And this is already foreordained by God. God already knew that the Jews are going to reject him. They're not going to choose him. So the gospel is going to go to the Gentiles. And so he's saying that, you know, God is saying, I will use the Gentiles to stir you up towards God. I will use the Gentiles to awaken you from your slumber, uh, to awaken you uh, to of your jealousy, because they were... You know, they always thought they were the chosen people, the chosen race, the chosen generation, the people who had the promises, the covenants. It was them and no one else. But now, you know, when um, the Gentiles have been uh, incorporated into the church, they are they are part of the the, the, the promised seed. They are receiving the, the Abraham's promise. So God is saying, I'm doing all this so that it can provoke you, to awaken you to some kind of jealousy so that, you know, you would, uh, you would be able to uh, see the truth and uh, know the uh, truth. So what Paul is basically doing here in verses 19 and 20 is setting up the stage for what is coming up in chapter 11, that God has uh, you know, taken the message out to the Gentiles to awaken the Jews uh, to the truth. Uh, the truth was given to the Jews but you know they refused they rejected it and now it's gone to the gentiles and now god is using the gentiles to awaken the jews uh, to the uh, truth okay so and we see that this is something that god has already spoken ahead of time uh, part of what he's doing uh, is through the gentiles he's awakened the king the jews to know who uh, Christ is. I'll just finish this last bit. I know I'm two minutes way beyond time. Just finish this last bit, verse 21. Uh, you know, it says, but to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary uh, people. So here he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 to 2, uh, where, you know, Jews, uh, God knows that they are stubborn, disobedient, uh, uh, hard to listen people uh, they would not listen to the message of christ so you know what is paul why is paul mentioning all this he's actually setting us up for chapter 11 where he's going to show how god is reaching out to the gentiles with the gospel to awaken uh the jews uh, and he's eventually bringing both the jews and the gentiles as one nation or as one people in uh, Christ. So the gospel is reaching everywhere. Israel is aware of the gospel. It went out from them to the Gentiles. The Gentiles is receiving the gospel and God is manifesting himself to them. Uh, but Israel is hard towards the message of Christ. So irrespective of whether people are receiving the gospel or not, whether their hearts are hardened towards the gospel or not, Paul is saying, you know, let's take the message, let's take uh, the word that is near our heart and in our mouth, let's confess it so that, you know, everyone can hear it and all those who choose and all those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord will receive salvation. Okay, so that is uh, Romans chapter 10. Uh, anyone has any questions? Sorry, I just went way beyond time, four minutes. Anyone has any questions? No questions, okay. Okay, thank you, Harrison. Anyone else? Okay, if you have no questions, then please read through Romans chapter 10. If you have any doubts, you can ask on, on Friday and we'll continue with Romans chapter 11 on um, Friday. Okay, see you all on Friday. Have a, a good day. God.